Hi guys, welcome! The new update is here. In this video, we'll take a look at the big changes in the fourth phase of the Wills of Alberta version update. This includes the new seasons of GVG and 12v12, the exchange pre-order system, new synth weapons, and various adjustments and optimizations. Please take note of the following schedule for the maintenance patch in C, Global, and EU servers this month of August. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First up, we have the continuation of the Wills of Alberta main story quest. Players who have already completed the Quiller's Memories quest can accept the next quest, Dawn Before Despair, at Alberta. Up next, the third season of GVG will start on the following dates, which will last for 6 weeks. Guilds will be ranked based on the sum of their 3 highest scores and all members of the top guilds will be awarded the season's Abyss Wild Roar Mount and the season trophy. Take note that the ownership of all castles will be reset and will become neutral, War of Crystal ranking will be reset, and GVG rental gears will be removed. Up next, we have a new exchange pre-order feature that will allow you to automatically buy or snap for items as it becomes available in the exchange even when you're offline. Thus, you won't have to constantly check the exchange. The way it works is you select an item, tap pre-order, and then set the quantity and other parameters to create an order. When the order is active, the system will automatically purchase items that fit your order requirements until the order is fulfilled or expires. Know that you would have to pay the Zenny amount as you place the order, but it will be refunded if the purchase fails or the order expires. However, this feature will only be available when the monthly premium is active. Up next, we have several adjustments to the Ronin Collab class. I think the rerun of the Ronin Collab event will be happening soon. Up next, the 10th season of the 12 vs 12 PvP team competition will start on the following dates. The regular season mode will last for 3 weeks which will be followed by tournament mode where in the top teams based on 6v6 points will be qualified to join the match. The tournament ranking awards for this season are as follows. This includes the new Night Sever Witch back item and the Lolly Rory exclusive chat box. Up next, Dark Saren, which was killed in the Lighthouse and Main Story Quest, will now appear as new MVP in the Void Territory. You can find him in the northeast corner of Void Wasteland, sharing the same altar as Orc Hero but with different summoning intervals. Orc Hero can be summoned in the first and second quarter of the R, while Dark Saren can be summoned in the third and fourth quarter of the R. This new boss monster is of demi-human race, holy element, and medium size. Defeating it will drop the following materials, equipment, and relic shards. The Dark Saren card, which was previously only available through BCC boxes, can now be dropped by this new Void MVP or randomly obtained from card gacha and through King Pouring's combined fate. Dark Saren also drops the blueprint of Crown of Feather, a headwear that boosts auto-attack damage by up to 17% when refining reaches plus 15. Up next, we have 5 new synth weapons added to the game. First, Heavy Spear can now be synthesized to Apocalypse Spear which is used for the sacrifice build of Divine Avenger. Second, Tooth Blade can be synthesized to Surgical Knife which is used for the backstab DBS build of Phantom Dancer. Third, Ice Pick can be synthesized to Penetrator which is used for the Strip Debuffer build of Phantom Dancer. Fourth Abra Bow can be synthesized to the Bow of the Destroyer, which is used for the Bow Debuffer build of Phantom Dancer. And fifth Death Note can be synthesized to Book of Destruction, which is used for the Debuffer build of Chronomancer and Jormungandr. If you're looking for a reliable and efficient online game top-up center, I highly encourage you guys to check out Smile One. With years of experience in the industry and partnerships with various game developers, they offer top-ups for a wide range of games at competitive prices, including Premium and BCC for Ragnarok Mobile. Smile One Top-Up is available in many countries across all servers, and you may pay via their trusted payment platform. In the Philippines, I can pay securely using my GCash via Alipay and receive the BCC instantly. Please do check out Smile One's pricing and payment methods using my exclusive link in the description box below. Up next, we have the following instance-related updates. First, there are more conditions needed to be met before unlocking Chaotic Invasion. After completing all required quests, it will be automatically unlocked at base level 50. 
Second, the HP shield of Mini Monsters in Chaotic Invasion and Shadow Realm of Phantom will be removed, so it will now be faster to clear these instances. And third, there's now a chance to obtain the Fantastic Dragon Galarenton card after clearing the Legend difficulty of Ponypet Museum Island first floor and in the card gacha. This new foot gear card increases skill damage reduction by 10%. It also converts your own race to dragon when under an abnormal status, so it's perfect for reducing the damage taken. Up next, we have the following guild-related updates. First, the guild challenge and the building rewards have been optimized. Some guild challenge rewards will now grant a certain amount of zenny, Eden coins, guild contribution, and honor proof. The amount will increase based on your guild's cat litter box level. Second, the shining glass beads will no longer be obtainable and can no longer be used in the cat litter box after the maintenance. Remaining shining glass beads in your inventory will be exchanged for steward's cat's gift. Third, the vending machine shops and the GVG rental gear shop will be separated into different shops. You will now be able to purchase praying card packs, rainbow chips, and repair shards using contribution. Thus, the rune bags from the Prentera rune shop that can be purchased using contribution and gold medal will now be moved to the vending machine. Fourth, Nibelungan shards will no longer be obtainable, hence Valhalla ruins will now drop honor proof instead. In addition, you can no longer use Nibelungan shards to purchase items from the Hall of Valor shop, but you can use honor proof instead. Remaining Nibelungan shards in your inventory can be exchanged for honor proof. Fifth, guild artifacts will be adjusted from demi-human race to all races. And sixth, the sacred blessing max limit will be adjusted from level 30 to level 40. Up next, the hero story quest will be changed to Heroes Adoramus and it will be moved from the hero class interface to the quest interface. The Heroes Adoramus quest will be unlocked at base level 100 and you can now accept and complete these quests even if you haven't unlocked the corresponding hero class. Unlocking each quest will require one Fate Gem. You will be provided 5 Fate Gems per day, which will be restored the next day during server reset. Upon completing all 5 Heroes Adoramus quests of a hero class, you will obtain the corresponding hero avatar. Up next, let's take a look at the various quality of life adjustments and optimizations. First, the precast and backswing animation of various job skills have been optimized allowing players a smoother battle experience. The precast period now starts during charging so that a skill is released once a charge ends. After a skill is released, its backswing can now be interrupted by moving or releasing another skill. Second, the effect of the combined proficient 6v6 leak skill will be changed from reduces skill delay and cooldown by 5% to 20% to has 3% to 12% chance to not enter skill delay and cooldown when using job skills and has 3% to 12% chance to negate damage when receiving skill damage. Third, the display of control resist bar below the monster's HP will be removed but the mechanism for control immunity will remain the same as before. And fourth, an apply to join button will be added to the front detail interface. Last but not least, we have a few recharge related updates. First, the prices of the first discount pack for the various supply boxes each week will be adjusted from 288,888 zenny to 0 BCC. Second, the revamped Time Wish Machine will become available after the update. This will include all costume and headwear gacha items from August and September of previous years. After that, each update will include previous costume and headwear gacha items from the two following months of previous years. In other words, on September 10, items from October's and November's of previous years will be included, and so on. And lastly, there will be a rate-up for the following MVP cards in a card gacha machine. So those are all the big changes coming in the fourth phase of the Wills of Alberta version update. Which part of this update are you most excited about? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. You may check the links below for the full text patch notes and the download link to the game client. Alright, that's it for this video guys, don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.